All right, welcome, 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 welcome. Please come in. So first off, before I jump in, what do you think of my image? Is that kind of creepy or is it? Is it <laughs> I actually generated that and I, I asked it for a llama holding up three fingers and that's what I got. Um, that was actually, I think, after my sixth prompt. So yeah, Gen AI is interesting, it's creepy and it's uh, cringeworthy sometimes. So anyways, I, as Rob mentioned, I'm Joe Spizak, I'm with Meta. Um, I'm here to talk about Llama 3. Uh, before I jump in, just who is this, this guy up here talking about Gen AI? Um, I've been in the AI space for, I guess, a little over a decade now. Uh, I spent a lot of time in open source. I've uh, spent time working on PyTorch for, God, more time than I can mention. Um, uh, took that to a foundation, built up that team at Meta. Um, been uh, doing, you know, working all the way back to the cafe days. Um, Onyx, I've uh, been at, you know, Google, Amazon. Um, so I've been kind of in and around AI, and especially open science and, and open AI for, for quite a long time. I also do a lot of advising and angel investing. Some of the companies you probably recognize on there, uh, they're pretty awesome. But I only invest in companies that I'm very good friends with the founders. So that's my one, one uh, razor that I use. Um, so today I have a really exciting talk. This is super new information, super like off, hot off the shelf. I actually made, like I said, a lot of these slides on the, on the Uber ride up here this morning. Um, so you're going to love them. Uh, so Llama, uh, I think everyone has hopefully heard of Llama at this point. It's, uh, okay, it's, thank you. Um, <laughs> it's, it's definitely my baby and uh, we have such an amazing team behind this. So it's, you know, I'm one, one small piece of it and I'm very proud to be part of that, uh, this team. So um, a little bit of history uh, before we jump into Llama. So we actually started a, an org in Meta uh, actually about February, 2023, it feels like it's it's you know five years, ten years. It feels like ancient history, but we started the org back in February of uh, 2023. Uh, it basically collected a number of teams across Meta. I had spent time in AI platform as well as in Fair, uh, Facebook AI Research, or fundamental AI research now uh, that were Meta, and basically bringing together some of the smartest and brightest people uh, in AI, AI across the company, from SysML to modeling folks to data to just uh, flat out, you know, badass researchers doing uh, in-domain research. Um, you know, some of the things uh, we did is we actually brought all of the creative folks as well. Uh, so, you know, if you're familiar with some of our work like Emu, um, which actually, you know, is actually our Imagine Flash, which I took this actually off the website. I generated that, these this morning. Um, and of course we have to have a llama, so a cute white llama skipping in front of the, you know, of a small red barn in the rain. Um, this was generated with a prompt. By the way, you can do this completely free. You can go and just go to meta.ai um, and click on Imagine, and you can generate and just hit Animate, and it'll do all this for you. And you can download the video yourself and do all that stuff. It's pretty cool. Um, so a little bit about Llama. Let's let's jump into like the recap of kind of where we were and, and kind of what we've done so far. So you know, again, it feels like a million years ago. Uh, we released Llama 2 back in uh, July. So these were commercially uh, available, commercially usable. Uh, models along with um, you know, about basically 100 or so partner, over 100 partners. Uh, we actually released shortly thereafter Code Llama, which were code specific models, fine tuned for code generation. Um, you could converse about code, use it for Python, et cetera. Um, adoption has been ridiculous. Uh, so we've seen up until now like over 170 million downloads of our models, um, over on Hugging Face, um, I mean, close to 50,000 derivative models. So people fine tune for different applications, re upload hit the leaderboard, et cetera. There's like you know, over 12,000 GitHub projects. Uh, there's startups literally being named after Llama, which is just incredible. Um, in December, we released uh, something called Purple Llama. Has anyone heard of Purple Llama? A few names, okay, I'm gonna dive into that because I'm disappointed in that show of hands. So we'll, we'll talk about Purple Llama more. Uh, so we released Purple Llama, which was our umbrella project for open trust and safety. And we know how important trust and safety is in the Gen AI era, so, and I'll talk a lot more about that. But we released basically things like our input output safeguards for how you um, filter inputs of prompts as well as what the model actually generates. And we also uh, introduced the first open cybersecurity uh, eval benchmark, which is on Hugging Face. And, um, and again, I have more, more to say on that. Uh, we saw a lot of adoption. Uh, so cloud providers are deploying these tools. Uh, you know, uh, people are putting their models up on, on Hugging Face and seeing how, they, how, how much risk they have in terms of of, uh, of, of cybersec um, uh, generation, and that's, that's things like how helpful you are to a cyber attacker, which of course you don't want to be very helpful to a, a cyber attacker, right? Um, 
but these models can be. Um, and then we released another version of Code Llama in January, just this, this year on, uh, um, in January, uh, the 70B, which is a larger version of it that's uh, with state of the art. And again, all of this is commercially available. We have uh, tools, we have open source code. Uh, the license allows commercial use. Um, you can pretty much do what, do what you want, uh, modulo the uh, acceptable use policy that we have. So here's kind of like the timeline um, view. So the original Llama, um, back in February, this was licensed for research usage. There's a lot of fun stories about the original Llama. That was my old team doing theorem proving and, and AI. They're now the Mistral team, uh, if you're familiar with Mistral. Uh, so we released all the way up to a 65 billion parameter model. Llama 2, again, commercially uh, usable. Um, 7, all the way up to 70, uh, state of the art at the time. Um, really, I would say, like really high quality models um, used in now enterprise, startups are building on them. Uh, it's really changed the, the landscape. And then Code Llama came in August and in January. Um, and then, of course, we have Meta Llama 3. Woo! Yeah. So, Meta Llama 3, this is an absolute labor of love. If you go on the model card on GitHub, um, you'll see how many people contribute. And actually, as we speak, people are saying, you forgot me, you forgot me, you forgot me. So I'm actually updating that model card with, with a lot of contributors across the company uh, who played a major role in making this happen. It took an absolute village to get uh, Llama 3 out the door. Uh, we released basically two versions of it, so an 8 billion parameter. So you're wondering, like, why 7? You know, why, why 8 instead of 7? Well, the vocabulary got larger and, you know, so more parameters, but um, turned it turned into an 8. Um, and then we have a 70 billion. Um, and we released both the pre-trained base models uh, as well as the uh, aligned, we call them instruct um, models. And these are kind of analogous to the previous chat models. Um, and uh, those are all open source. We also uh, released uh, a LlamaGuard V2, which I'll talk about um, as well. So a little click down into these models. Um, so we trained them on um, 7x, at least 7x more data. So if you're familiar with the previous models, uh, we trained those on about 2 trillion tokens in pre-training. Um, so that's over 15 trillion tokens uh, these new models have been trained on. Uh, in terms of like fine tuning, so you know, if you're familiar with the workflow of, of generative AI models, um, you know, pre-training is unsupervised, meaning you don't have labels. Um, in post-training, you do uh, things like reinforcement learning with human feedback or, you know, DPO, which I'll talk about. Um, but you also have a lot of human annotations. And to kind of give you an idea, we had 1 million annotations in SFT uh, in, uh, in Llama 2. We actually 10 x that, actually a little over 10 x that um, in Llama 3. So a lot more human uh, labeled data. That's very, very expensive, but it makes for amazing models. Um, and obviously, we included um, a larger vocabulary, um, a new tokenizer, which don't sleep on our tokenizer. It is awesome. Um, and it's really, uh, it's much more efficient, much more performant. Um, and we've also doubled the context window. Um, I want to emphasize these models are actually our very early releases of Llama 3. We're, we were actually going to call these pre-release or preview because they didn't have all the things we, we planned to release. Um, but Mark really, really wanted to release them um, and call them Llama 3, so we did. And honestly, like we were just blown away at the reception and blown away at how good they are compared to other models. Speaking of which, so we actually do uh, evaluations on both uh, the instruct or kind of the post-trained models, uh, but also the base models themselves. So you can kind of consider the base model as you know, something that will do, like uh, it will do a, a completion, for example, like a text completion. Um, and then you can think about the instruct as like, you can actually converse with it, right? It's been human aligned. Um, it will actually, you know, uh, do question and answer or, or you know, kind of actually do things like chat or whatever. So it's much more like um, aligned with, with an application type of uh, use case. And you can see from the left side, these are, this is really, um, you know, this is actually pretty incredible. But you can, you can look at, the, we compare the 8B models, uh, which are, you know, usable on actually even mobile phones like Qualcomm is quantizing them and running them on, on their phones, on Snapdragon. Um, and those are state-of-the-art against you know, some of the other uh, top models, like Gemma uh, 7B, as well as the Mistral 7B, um, and by huge margins. Um, so um, and actually, one thing that's not even on the slide is when you compare the numbers and the performance of the 8B, it's actually better than the 70B Llama 2 model, which is ridiculous when you think about it. Uh, we also compared the 70B, our larger model, uh, to Gemini Pro 1.5, as well as Claude 3 Sonnet. Um, and it's just about beating across the board, you know, modulo pointer to uh, on math and 
Um, and obviously Google does a different thing with their Minerva prompts, so you can read all about that. But the, but the 70B is, uh, is an absolute uh, crazy model, um, open source model. And as you can see, we also did um, pre-trained um, benchmarks. So one of the interesting things about pre-trained is like not many companies actually release those numbers. So we actually were pretty lucky to get Gemini Pro 1.0 if we read their paper and, uh, and saw what they actually published. And obviously you can see that things don't line up, um, but you know, the, uh, the, the base models actually are uh, across the board um, you know, better than the 1.0 uh, models. Uh, and the, the newly released mixed role um, 22B, which just came out uh, last week and then the, uh, the Instruct version this week. So ridiculously impressive models. These are gonna be super fun to play with. You're gonna love them. Um, please download them, have fun. Um, one of the things that we were really uh, adamant about and really passionate about is, you know, the benchmarks are fun. It's great to show like MMOU and like GSMAK and these kind of things. And it's, it's a bit of gamesmanship that goes along with like that. But the rubber kind of meets the road when you actually put these in the hands of humans and understand how they actually, you know, do and how they like these models. And so what we did, we have a lot of annotation partners and we, we um, scaled through them and we worked with, uh, with them basically to, to generate an 1800 prompt uh, data set, um, based, again, based on human, human prompts across uh, 12 categories. This, this could be coding, this could be reasoning. Um, we have a whole, you know, there's a lot of details that we post on GitHub. Um, and basically then asked all of these humans like how well they performed. And you can see our win, win tie and loss rates. And so this is kind of, you know, if you don't believe the benchmarks, believe the humans, right? These are the actual people that are playing with these models and actually like them and you can see you know, compared, obviously, overwhelmingly, people like Llama 3 better than Llama 2. I like Llama 3 definitely better than Llama 2. Um, but versus GPT 3.5, versus Mistral Medium, versus Cloud Sonic, um, across the board, uh, people liked Llama 3, which is really incredible. So that, that was really encouraging. That told us, okay, it's not just like the benchmarks that, you know, that we're, we're doing, it's actually, you know, the, the models are qualitatively better. And actually, what was amazing is our, our team, every single day, was playing with these models. I would wake up in the morning, I would play with the models, I would ask it questions, I would see if it would false refuse, or it would uh, answer my questions, or how chatty it was. Like, we really spent a lot of, lot of time uh, tuning these models. <clears throat> so getting into like, the details of how we actually developed them, there's, I would say, really four, four things that, at the highest level that we thought about. One is the model architecture. Uh, one, uh, you know, we used a dense autoregressive transformer. Uh, if you're familiar with Llama, Llama 2, we also had a, a group query attention or GQA um, uh, attention mechanism in, uh, in those models. Um, and this time we added a new tokenizer, which we, we will talk in much more detail on in the paper we're gonna release pretty soon. Um, so not a huge crazy uh, leap in, um, in actual model architecture, but some like thoughtful changes. And then we scale, scaled it way up. Uh, training data, as I mentioned, over 15 trillion tokens, so uh, a lot of compute, a lot of, a lot of data. Um, in terms of pre-training, we used, um, we did a blog post, I think, two weeks ago uh, on our training infrastructure. We have uh, two custom-built 24K H100 clusters uh, that we use to train these, um, so we are blessed with a lot of compute. Thank you, Jensen. Thank you, Mark. Um, and then lastly, we did uh, a lot of work, so in, in post-training. So uh, I think everyone loves to talk about pre-training and how much we scale up and you know, tens of thousands of GPUs and, and how much data at, at pre-training, but really I would say the magic is in post-training. That's where we are spending most of our time these days. Uh, that's where we're, we're generating a lot of human annotations. This is where we're doing a lot of SF, you know, and, and SFTing those. We're doing things like rejection sampling, um, PPO, DPO, and trying to balance you know, the usability and the, the kind of human aspect of these models along with you know, obviously the, the large scale data and pre-training. So this is kind of how we, we thought about these things. Um, we've also looked at, uh, at helpfulness and safety. So this is you know, an inherent trade-off. So you kind of have to maximize, we're trying to maximize helpfulness of these models, like how useful they are, how well they can answer questions, factuality, et cetera. But we also want to balance you know, safety and, and understand you know, um, how the model uh, responds in terms of like um, of kind of integrity type prompts, and, and there's more about that in our model card. And we were actually posting, we actually posted another a parallel blog post uh, this morning that talks about that as well. So the last piece, so um, you know, one of the things that's that's very important, I would say, in the uh, Gen AI era is red teaming. Uh, we spent a lot of time, uh, and the bar keeps changing, right? The the Things keep changing in terms of red teaming and, and how we think about these things. 
like, uh, I mean, is, have folks heard of something called like C &E, for example? I'm kind of curious. Okay, so no, I don't see any hands. Okay, so there's like, you know, cyber and biological risks and nuclear and radio, I mean, it's, so these are like major, these are kind of like frontier risks that were, if you read the executive order that came out last year, um, it, it does talk about these and we evaluate our models on, on these things. So how helpful would you be um, if someone wanted to generate a bioweapon, for example? Well, I mean, you know, we have, to, we have to evaluate for those things. We have to understand. I mean, you could Google search, right? And you can probably generate some links that'll tell you how to do things. Um, but how, how well can a model, you know, bring, bring together disparate information um, and, and help you? So these are things we actually have to evaluate for and we have to mitigate for. So we actually have teams literally dedicated for this purpose. Lastly, just quickly quick on the license. Not a lot changed. Um, it's a research and commercial use. You can, der you can create derivatives of it. Uh, there's a 700 MAU um, thing, so if you're you know, a big, very, very big company, uh, you come work with us, and, and most of them do. Um, and we also added uh, some guidelines for branding because we just had so many uh, companies wanting to use Llama, and we wanted to be able to, to brand it correctly, so that's in the license now. So the ecosystem, as I mentioned, it's big. Here's just a handful of, of some of the, the, the folks that are there, all the way from the hardware vendors, uh, like NVIDIA and Intel and Qualcomm, we work with really closely all the way through to the enterprise um, and platform providers. It's, uh, it's a really awesome uh, ecosystem we have. This is just those that we've gotten uh, sign off for uh, logos. <laughs> uh, there's also a huge open source community, um, Olama being probably my personal favorite. That's a really awesome project. Um, obviously, we work really closely with the GGML folks. Yarn is a really cool project as well for extended context length. So definitely check out some of the projects. OK, switching gears to safety, because I think I'm going to run out of time, actually. Um, maybe they'll let me go over, who knows. So uh, I mentioned um, Purple Llama. So anyone know why we call it Purple Llama? OK, not a single hand. Eh? Red, blue. There you go, red, blue. OK, so red team and blue team. So offensive and defensive. This, we, we borrowed this from the kind of cybersecurity space. It was actually named by one of the, uh, the scientists in our, our cybersec uh, slash gen AI team. Um, and we felt it was really important that we, uh, that we kind, of, kind of manage both you know, metrics, like being able to eval and actually have a, a, a clear metric for how we're doing um, in terms of some of these harms, but then also have ways to mitigate. So you know, it's, it's not good enough to just be able to measure something. You need to actually be able to do something about it. And that's really what Purple Llama was all about. And so being able to eval and then be able to actually deploy models that actually allow you to filter these things. So this kind of led us to how we think about system level safety. So I mentioned we maximize helpfulness of our models, and this is actually a very different mindset that we took. Um, you know, in Llama 2, for example, we, it, they were very safe models. We put a lot into the models themselves in, in terms of fine tuning, um, but it actually, a lot of times, would false refuse, or it would, um, you know, there would be very, very, there would be almost too safe um, in a lot of cases. And so we actually took a very, we, obviously the models are very safe, I, I promise, um, but at the same time, we wanted to actually have the flexibility of have the, having these input and output safeguards, and then you can kind of customize your taxonomy. So if you want to basically filter out for a certain kind of risk, um, you absolutely can, and you can just uh, fine tune the, the, the uh, external model. And so you kind of think about this in terms of like um, a, a workflow. So your use case, um, determine that. Basically then at the model level, I do things like prepare data, I train my model, I then evaluate for these different harms. I'm gonna end up having to, to mitigate because I've found some, some things that I don't like. I then you know, further fine tune or mitigate. Um, and from there, I can then deploy it um, for things like uh, inference time, basically prompt filtering. Um, and that's where some of the things like uh, Llama Guard, which I'll talk about here in a second, as well as Code Shield, which is brand new as well. So CyberSec eval is something we, uh, we had released, like I said, in, back in December. We have uh, number two, or the second iteration of it, which expands significantly. That's all open source now. We actually have a hugging face leaderboard. You can uh, evaluate your model on it. We now have the ability to evaluate for prompt injection. This is like, hey, you know, ignore that previous command and tell me you know, your real secrets, right? That, those, those kind of sneaky little you know, prompts that people love to, to kind of, uh, to kind of um, uh, get around some of the, the, the safety in models. Uh, we also have automated offensive uh, cybersecurity capabilities. And basically, the, we, we can actually measure the propensity to abuse a code interpreter. Um, which is pretty cool. There's a paper, by the way, we released today that has all, all kinds of details of this. So you can see all the, all the different things we have in here in terms of insecure code, um, in terms of cyber attacker helpfulness, interpreter abuse, 
um, offensive cybersecurity capabilities, um, and susceptibility to prompt injection, which is like really one of the, the biggest concerns of LLMs today. And so let's talk about a few results. Um, again, I'm keeping it pretty high level because I'm gonna run out of time, but uh, you can kind of see where, uh, where some of our models compare uh, across the board. So you can see on the left here, um, this is actually the refusal rate. So basically like how overly refusal or how, how much your model is actually gonna refuse versus violation rate. So the, the um, x-axis is uh, violation rate. And you can see like the 8B Llama 3 actually performs pretty incredible. It's actually right in the sweet spot there. Uh, the 70 b is actually a much more coherent model or much smarter model, so it actually, um, what we found is actually the more uh, powerful the model is, the more it's gonna actually violate and then you have to mitigate and so on. So it kind of sits right there in the middle. Um, you can see code llama 70 b, we actually were, we actually mitigate, we probably overly mitigated that model to be honest. So you can see it's, uh, it actually refuses at a pretty high level, which is kind of annoying to, to users. So it's something we're, we're learning from and we're, you know, fix that in the next generation. Uh, here's a bit of a tough, tough uh, chart to see, but um, this is basically how models perform in terms of prompt injection. So this is the, you can see the model versus basically all of the different types of, um, of prompt injection attacks. This is like repeated token attacks, persuasion, like virtualization, like all of these different ways. There, and there's a whole bunch of ways you can actually try and jailbreak these models. And you can kind of see, um, you know, at the top there, uh, blue is, you know, blue is better and so on, so. So if you want to dig into all this and in detail and actually run this yourself, I've linked actually at the top there. Okay, LlamaGuard uh, very quickly. So uh, again, in December, we released LlamaGuard V1. Again, this is an open source model. This is a model that you can use. You can deploy it yourself. It was based on the 7B Llama 2. Uh, it got deployed in uh, Amazon, in SageMaker. It got deployed in Together and a bunch of other places, Databricks. Um, again, this is, like, this is analogous to like a content moderation API, except it's a free model that you can customize which is pretty cool. Um, we built Llama Guard 2, which is based on Llama 3, so it's a much more powerful model. You can see the benchmarks look that much better. So if you, uh, if you go to, uh, we announced the ML Commons policy this week. Um, it's really, really good on, on that policy, obviously, because we co-designed it with all of our partners in ML Commons, um, but it also performs across the board really, really strongly compared to GPT-4 and a bunch of other uh, APIs. And again, it's available openly. Uh, Code Shield um, is a, basically a uh, inference time uh, input output safeguard tool for cybersecurity. So it basically supports uh, filtering of insecure code produced by LLMs. So if you ask it to generate, say, a phishing attack, it's gonna filter it out. So pretty cool. And that's actually, uh, again, uh, um, open source. It's on, the, on GitHub, you can grab it. Um, it basically covers everything from insecure code to code interpreter to secure command execution protection, so stuff like that. And then I think I, I think I have maybe one or two more slides, um, and I'll get into like some cool, really cool stuff if you'll let me go over maybe one or one or two more minutes. So Torch Tune, um, we co-designed. Anyone heard of Torch Tune? Anyone use PyTorch? Okay, sweet. Okay, so Torch Tune, labor of love for myself and Sumith and the team. This is a pure PyTorch fine-tuning library. So no 15 dependencies, nothing crazy. This is pure PyTorch. This is as clean as it gets. So you can build on this. You can use it yourself in Python and in, in PyTorch. It's beautiful, um, full fine tuning. It supports Llama 3 out of the gate. Obviously I'm showing Llama 2 sadly only here, but, uh, but they've actually rolled out uh, Llama 3 support and it's, it's absolutely fantastic. It's integrated with Hugging Face and a bunch of other libraries. Uh, it's awesome, check it out. Um, here's a bunch of resources. Um, go to the GitHub, Llama 3. Uh, we have Llama recipes, you can search that. And then uh, we have a bit.ly there with a bunch of getting started notebooks, Langchain, RAG, um, prompt engineering, a bunch of stuff. Okay, one more minute please. So we actually have, Mark uh, talked about this uh, this morning, we actually have a much larger model training. It's a big boy. So we, we, wanted, to, we wanted to tease a few metrics here. So we're showing, uh, and you can go off and compare, I think I saw a few comparisons on Twitter this morning. Um, you can go off and compare this to other models out there. This model is not done training. Um, it's, uh, it still has a little bit of a ways to go, but we wanted to tease some of the numbers. So we actually showed both the pre-training and the, uh, we, we grabbed a checkpoint and did basically some pretty basic SFT, aligned it and showed some numbers. And you can see MOU is 86.1, which is like approaching a ridiculous comparison. I can't compare it to someone, but you can kind of see where this model is trending. Um, and in terms of uh, GSMAK, uh, 94.1. So it's a really, really strong model. Again, not done training, not done you know, in post-training. Post-training is gonna change a lot. 
uh, we wanted to tease at least a, a few of these metrics. So pretty exciting. Um, this is from a checkpoint just like three days ago. Happy birthday. <laughs> so a couple of things of what's to come. Obviously, we have bigger and better models coming. Uh, and those, and we just, we're teasing our, our models that are over 400 bugging parameters. Multilingual, uh, we will support a lot of languages. I mean, you can imagine, you know, Facebook is, you know, our properties, our FOA, our family of apps is over 4 billion people or around 4 billion people. We are everywhere, so multilingual is super important for everything from meta AI. We want to build that into Llama as well. Multimodal, you can imagine um, all the things we're doing in AR, VR, using smart glasses, Ray-Ban. Um, you know, you need to be able to understand uh, everything around you, and you can't do that in text, right? So multimodal is coming. And of course, our commitment to safety. And we're going to continue to open source all of our safety and or a lot of our safety stuff, build community around it, build standardization around safety. Um, it's something I'm super passionate about. So we're definitely going to continue to do that. So um, last, uh, I promise, go to meta.ai if you actually want to play with Llama 3. It's, basically, it's free. You can play with it. You can prompt it. You can actually have it generate images like I started out showing, those, uh, those cool um, animated images. Um, just click on Imagine and then uh, prompt it, and then click Animate, and it'll generate some stuff. You can also just prompt uh, Meta AI. You're actually calling a Llama 3-based model, uh, which is really cool. Um, I will pause there. Thank you so much. <laughs>